Welcome to Monday News number 28. Kind of exciting month because uh, we're going to start product design. So in the last months we have been working on building machines, uh, a lot of new machines. Uh, and Jan actually made a nice little recap about where we are with the machines in the workspace. So working on the engineering side of it. And then later how we're going to use them to make products. So Jan. Hello, my name is Jan, and uh, the last seven months were mainly focused on machine experimenting and building, and so I will present you some of our work here in the workspace. So you can see here our shredder development, when we work in parallel and two strategy, so single shaft against double shaft. We still have to work on our pellet quality at the moment, because the granulates are too big, but the productivity is there. The extrusion that machine that we have here is a beefy prototype that we use to run some tests in order to design the final version as good as possible. But as you can see, we can already obtain some good quality beams. So the sheet press system is a complete setup that allows us to build 120 by 120 meter sheets, and which is constituted by one big oven and one big press. So now we are more focused on uh, material testing. For the beams, for example, we will try to partner with uh, laboratories to get better data on their resistance. We are now working on how to process sheets, and you can cut, bend, glue, or even CNC cutting. All these techniques will be properly documented in how-to videos. We also run some tests on CNC to be able to offer a good guide on injection mold design and building that allow us to create various objects that we have then to test to ensure the applications. So that's what we've been up to in the last seven months. And now Vicente will talk to you more about product design. Thank you, Jan. My name is Vicente, and I'm going to talk about product design. Precious plastic has been mainly focused on developing machines to create alternatives to recycled plastic. And so far, it's been the community who has taken the lead into design um, products and uh, conceptualizing and making them real. All sort of bowls, household items, uh, a lot of decorative tiles uh, in the bazaar, we've seen trays as well. Um, small little functional objects like surf pins and, uh, and even jewelry. So one of the things that all these products has in common is that they are all crafty and handmade. For version 4, we want to contribute more in product design to the community. And one of the focuses is to make bigger products and also really precise molds in order to challenge what is the perception of recycled plastic and what it's capable of. On the other hand, we also want to make like rough products but really functional that creates alternatives for developing countries, for instance, in the construction area. One of the examples of uh, bigger products that we are working on, it's a modular structure that Adam has been working for a couple of months. He's going to introduce you deeper now. Yes, yes, yes. I developed this uh, joinery uh, the, during the design process. The main point was the, the modularity and the structural strength. What do you think are the good points of this uh, in joinery in particular? The, the good point is the modularity because easy to really easy to set up and after you produce the whole part really fast to build it the construct if you have a clear idea what you want to do for example a greenhouse or a small house it's uh, it's really strong the the yeah. whole joinery point right yeah absolute uh, we tried to sitting on it on the top and it was in a strong so we were really happy because of yeah, we realized the recycled plastic after injection can be really strong to, for example, build a, a like this structure. So, so one of the bigger achievements of version four um, is that we develop a sheet press uh, system in which we are able to make recycled plastic sheets. And Jason is going to talk more about um, it right now. So so far we've made sheets at uh, six millimeter and twelve millimeter. <laughs> We've used polystyrene, HDP, and polypropylene. So there are different types of materials of different qualities, 
With polystyrene, you get a very strong but brittle sheet, but has a really nice smooth surface. With uh, HDP and PP, you get a slightly more flexible but stronger sheet. Um, it has a slightly rough surface, but that can be polished after. Um, the sheets we're making are 1220 by 1220, which is half of the industry standard, which means they can be easily integrated into pre-established manufacturing processes. Uh, one of the exciting applications I see for the sheets is furniture design, especially using CNC machines, which are becoming more available across the world. But we also have been improving our extruder, and now with a bigger model, we're trying to test the limits of what it's capable of. And Tim has been testing, and he can show you right now what he's been uh, doing. Yeah, so with the bigger extruder, we're able to make bigger beams and fill larger molds. Some of the things we've been testing have been making solid rough bricks, extruding larger flower pots, bigger molds, and going even bigger, making skateboards. So along with these molds, we've been exploring the way that plastic flows through traditional beams and have found a way to create angular beams, which could lessen the amount of joinery needed, make stronger corners. With a new flat nozzle, thanks to the help of Zelenu, we've been able to extrude hollow beams, hollow tubes, uh, which is a big development, I think. A lot of potential in this. So after seven months of machine development and material research, we are ready to start the product design phase. If you've been inspired for what you've seen in this video, please let us know in the comment below. And if you're a product designer and you want to help, please join us at next.preciousplastic.com because we are opening few positions for product design in-house. But if you want to contribute remotely, please check the link below in which we are going to document all the process during the following weeks using one of the powerful tools in the, in the community, which is the forums. Okay, so I want to talk a bit more about forums. And it's a bit of a lengthy video, this part, but it's a problem that occurs here. And I think uh, it is a big part of this project as well. And I think it's maybe interesting to share. I think it's useful to share because it's stuff we have to deal with on a daily basis, but you guys are not aware of. So, online forums are super crucial for our project because it's a place where people share knowledge, uh, ideas, feedback, tips. It's really where the community from around the world comes together. But having an online community also comes with quite some problems. So, spam is one of those things, people just throwing messages on there. Um, another one is just having the platform, it can be very slow. Uh, you might miss functionalities, or it's just buggy. And that's something we're actually improving now by building One Army, this new platform that would help and make that all much better. Um, but there are also some problems that I, I, I just don't know how to deal with it. I, I don't know. And, and that's actually what I want to talk about today, because here we work with 40 people from around the world in one building, and we spend a lot of time just making the place nice, making sure people are not fighting, we're on the same page. But online, everyone just comes together and you hope it's going to be okay. And sometimes it, it doesn't, it just doesn't click. And I have one of those examples right here to talk to you about. And his name is Gunther. And he's probably one of our most active members in a positive and a negative way. See, he, he says a lot of things about the project in the forums. For instance, you're not creating an army, you're only enriching yourself or you're building this monolith pyramid structures with this organization. It's, it's such a waste of public money. I mean, we won an award, we never really used public money. Um, so he, he says a lot of things that are factually just not really right or we disagree with. So uh, we often reply, for instance, here's a super long post from Katrina, who's part of the team, who actually went every point in depth to explain what we stand for and why we're doing this. And then, you get messages back, like at the end it's a profit-driven uh, private enterprise, which we're not, we're actually a foundation. No transparency, I think we're quite transparent, we share everything what we do, open source for free. And no real community-based decisions, which I think is the opposite, we do everything here in community in this building together. And then there are also just things he, he doesn't like, for instance, um, the way how we get money is from Patreon, people supporting, uh, or Bazaar, or people donating money. And so he, he says it's not like a good thing, it's simply wrong. But then he does make a donation, which is super nice, actually. The moment he starts complaining a lot in the forums, you also see people replying to that. And the answer is often like, hey, if you don't like it, if you don't like the bazaar, maybe start your own website or your own marketplace. 
And that's we, we encourage people always to do that. That we build something, but it's not perfect. You can do you can help us out improving it or build your own thing. But then his answers are sometimes a bit rough. Like sorry, um, but you must be retarded, greedy, incompetent, arrogant, or just one of those pretentious spoiled hippies. I mean that's quite a rough answer to other members. People get upset about that. It just doesn't create a nice digital environment. So we end up often deleting an account because it just it's too rough. Um, but he just creates a new account, comes back, shares a lot of feedback again, infiltrates the forum. And actually, he, I also think he personally just doesn't like me, he thinks I should be in jail. The weird part is that on, on the one hand he's super negative and he hates everything we do from the little things but also the organizational structure. But I think he's also just one of our most contributive members. Uh, he's super active, so he's also very helpful in the forum, helping people to find their place, giving them tips and suggestions. He makes machines, super high-end quality proper machines actually, and he, he, uh, he sells them in our bazaar, which he actually doesn't like. Um, but I think he, he does all this stuff, like he really pushes precious plastic forward in a way as well. Uh, he has very good feedbacks there, uh, he's also contributing to GitHub, so helping out coding, this new platform. So I, I would say I really respect this guy as well for all the energy he puts into this project. I mean, there's not many people around the world that put so much care into it. Um, so I had a Skype with him to see like, hey, I don't know, who is this guy, what is up? Turned out to be quite a nice guy. But I was like, why, why are you so rough? And he was like, yeah, yeah, sometimes I'm just, just a bit passionate. I invited him actually to come to our workspace here in Eindhoven to help us out. But I think that's also the tricky point. He just has a different way of working than us. And I think that's actually one of the challenges we're right now. How do we create this harmony online? A nice place to be. Everyone can openly share what they think and uh, contribute to the project. So if you have any tips or suggestions, let us know. Sorry for picking on you, Gunther, but you are just one of our most active members, which illustrates very good the problem we have on a daily basis, what we have to work on. Um, not a personal, I like the passion you throw into it, and I, I think we want the same thing in the end. I just hope we find a way to work together. Uh, and for now, we're gonna see other community members around the world, also in our forums, that Katrina is gonna show what they've been making this month, all the beautiful, wonderful, colorful creations made by plastic. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next month, and have fun with Katrina. Hello, wonderful, uh, Kat speaking, and I am happy to present to the community news today. As you probably know, we have this online bazaar where people can, besides other things, buy and sell um, precious plastic products. And every now and then we check it out and uh, buy some of the products there to learn from them, get inspired, but also to show them here and show people who come by um, the variety, the big variety of all the products from the worldwide community. So let's start with uh, precious plastic Estonia clocks. Thank you very much. They've been making uh, clocks pretty much since they started. It's just super cool to see how um, within just one product, someone can experiment so much with different te techniques and patterns and colors and uh, probably learn a lot just by doing this one shape um, and at the same time making useful products which they can actually sell. Then we have the stool from Still Life uh, in the UK. And uh, this is just, they make super nice stools, very solid. And um, the very cool thing here is that you can just screw in the wooden legs. It's just a very simple and super clean, nice solution to attach the two materials together. Nice work, guys. And last but not least, maybe you remember this iPhone case mold we created and shared the blueprints for in the version three. Now we actually see a lot of people taking these files and making their own molds to produce their iPhone cases. Um, and yeah, of course, we also have some on the bazaar. For example, from Sotop. Ta-da! <laughs> they produce pretty nice iPhone cases now. But, uh, and also others from the community, so that's pretty cool to see. But what's maybe even more exciting about Sotop, from Germany, by the way, is that they came up with a very interesting uh, machine hack, which is automatic shredding, which of course helps a lot in the process of, of preparing all the material for production. And of course, it would be awesome to learn how you actually did it so that the community can also learn from it. This is actually a good moment to mention that we would like to share more machine hacks. 
So if you have a cool hack or modification or combination of different machines, take a cool photo and send it to us so we can share it. Yeah, that was it from me today from the community news. Have a lovely day and keep on your great work uh, and sharing it with everyone. Uh, love you guys. Bye bye. I'm not Charlotte, but I like Charlotte. Love you, Charlotte. <laughs>